if you had frustrations like I had, well, I should say first excitement when I saw these features come out into Affinity Designer. There was a mesh tool, a quad tool and everything. And like, yay, this is cool. I don't have to now go when I want to do these uh, sort of mesh distortions. I don't have to go into photo, you know, go file, edit in photo, do it there, come back in here. I can just do it here. And this was my excitement. Started off by going, okay, let me go get this picture that I always wanted to test. Pulled in, let's see where I can go get a, a picture quickly. Uh, I think this one yet. So this is a PNG. Okay, hopefully you're with me here, the excitement. And we came here, got down here and like, okay. But before I click on one of these, these are just presets and you can use any of them and, and manipulate them beyond that. There's a brilliant tutorial on all of these features by some other guy. Um, you can just look up on, on, the, on the YouTube. But I came here, pressed quad, there we go. I see the node tool coming and I pulled and like, yo, what's happening? This looks like I'm stretching the last pixel and I'm doing this. Checking, no, this doesn't look right. Um, and I thought, no, this, this tool is not working right. I have to find out from, well, uh, the affinity people, uh, you know, what, what's going on here. Until I realized that when you are in the designer persona, you are working with vectors and all of these features here, these mesh warp tools are actually designed to work with vector art. Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that. If I take this, delete it, and let me pull in just a piece of text. Um, put hello. Okay, so this text is, is vector art. Uh, or maybe I can go and get a cog or something. Just pull it down. Here. Just a word here to mention that if you're adding this mesh tool, you've got to select the object and then add the mesh. Then it's localized to that. So if I add it, I'll add it to the cog or I select the hello. Uh, if I can get onto the hello and add the mesh onto that the distortion, the, the warp mess, it will just act on that. If I come and I select the entire artboard, it will add the mesh onto the entire artboard and everything that's in it that is vector, I emphasize vector, will distort according to that mesh. Okay, so in this case, I want to be just on the word hello and I want to see if it distorts. As you saw previously, doing it with an image, just seem to be a clipping mask. Let me see if this does the same with vectors. So I'll go here, I'll say quad, pull it there, and yeah, there we go. Perfect. Uh, let me try it on the cog. Same thing, I'm going to add a mesh. Maybe let me add a, yeah, just go for mesh. This is like multiple areas, and if I move it, there we go. It's doing the distortion beautifully. So came to the understanding that the mesh tools in the designer persona are exclusively for vectors. Now, does that mean I have to go back to that plan of going over to Affinity Photo if I want to do any pixel-based uh, warping, do it there, and then pull it back in here and work with that particular adjustment? And the answer is no. Uh, I, I was doing it all along and I just discovered, no, man, there has to be an easier way. These guys wouldn't build these features in designer and let you every time jump out to photo. And I'll get to show you that, but I just want to cover one or two more things quickly. Yeah. What is really cool is, for example, this cog is a parametric, so you can adjust certain of its aspects. But because it's in a distortion warp group, okay. Um, I'm going to just reset this and maybe I'm going to see if I can change. Let me just check here. To mesh, I'm going to change it to quad to keep it simple. Um, so there you can see that it is it is distorting as a vector. But check this out. If I go to the cog itself, I can still adjust the parameters. Although it's warped and distorted, the parameters still work because it's non-destructive, which is really, really cool. Okay, so understand in this persona, everything vector works with these warp tools. So how do we get to 
working with pixel-based things. I'm going to just shift over onto this one here uh, on the right side, and we're going to do pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go in and go in place and get the gas live here again and put it there. Okay, but here the key is we don't stain this persona and apply any of these warp tools because it will just act like a clipping mask. We need to move over to the pixel persona. Now what it does is it, it kind of almost quasi moves us over into something very similar to the photo, um, the affinity photo environment. But now when we look at the bottom here, we don't have any of those warp tools available. Okay, and they are hiding up here. If you go to your layers, we check here there's new live filters perspective and mesh wall. I think the reason why they don't include it yet might confuse it because people won't maybe look at which persona they're in, etc. But I would like to see uh, these two, at least these live filters when you're in the pixel persona, even if they have a different icon here, yeah, it would really be cool. But anyhow, that's just a luxury. So we're coming here now. And remember we're in the pixel persona, we click on Mesh Warp while we've selected the actual object. Can you see there it changes there into these nodes? And look at this. If I grab there, there we go. Exactly what we've been looking for. Isn't that cool? So now we can do our warping as per usual. Now the cool thing about this is, let me just move that up a little bit. The cool thing about this is, is that this operates like any of the warp tools. It is a warp tool. So if I double click here, it's going to drop in a node there. If I double click here, it's going to drop in a node across. And I can move this and it will keep the distortions going. Okay, so again, it's, it's like any warp tool. There's nothing different about it. Um, the only thing is that we have to access it through the pixel persona. Once we've accessed it and attached the object to the warp tool, we can shift back to the design persona. Let me just shift back to the design persona. And you will notice here now that this warp mesh is still available here. But even though you're in the design, yeah, it's pulling it from the pixel persona because it's attached to that particular object. So if I click here onto the warp tool, I can still manipulate it here. If I'm here, I'm going to go over to this artboard. Let me just do this. I can come in here, and on this artboard, I can still work with my mesh tools. We can go and warp here. So now I'm working with vectors, and I can work at the same time. I, I have them on two different artboards, but they can be on the, the same object. It doesn't have to be on different artboards. I just put it this way for explanation purposes. But when you're in the de designer persona, because you've entered that warp tool in the pixel persona, it pulls it through here. Okay, so let me get back here. I'm just going to shift back to the pixel persona. There's one more thing I just want to show you before I end here, which is a cool feature. This I brought in a PNG, but if I have to bring in an embedded object like another affinity file, that's got maybe multiple artboards. You know, if I wanted to do a mock-up and I wanted to see what it looks like and flip through those artboards, I would need to pull in one, position it, and then replace it, position it, etc. Or I could do this feature. I'm now in the pixel persona. I'm going to go and place. Let me just find where I put this. Um, I think this was, yeah, this was a family crest that I was doing for somebody. So now I can come in and I position the crest here. In this example, let go. So I've just placed it there. If I now want to add warp to this, I would go up to layers. I'm going to go mesh warp there. And I'm going to just warp it kind of weirdly so we can see the distinction. So, so I'm making it a bit narrow over there. Maybe do it. Uh, or maybe... Yeah, I want to make it maybe an obvious edit. And just click there and click there. Okay, so I'm distorting it quite bad so you can see 
the effect when I when I do any other alteration. So here in my layers, we on this particular um, object. Now this is an embedded. So if I double click onto this object, it's going to open up another window. Let me just close this other stuff here. It's going to open up another window where we have these objects in because it's an embedded one. If I double click here, let's see. There you see I've got four artboards. It's pulling one of these artboards through now. Okay, if I just go back to this. Okay, it's distorted there. The cool thing is once I've selected this, if you look on top here now, you see there's some bit of information like the media box, the bleed box, etc. But there's one here called artboard. Because this embedded object has more than one artboard, you have the option of pulling in these others to see how it will look on your design. So if I come here to Wistazen 2, can you see that one is different? Wistazen 3. Those are different designs and it's pulling through different designs on it. Isn't that cool? I'm going to just remove this, uh, this distortion that we have on here. I can click there and just go and reset it. Okay, so I pull that back and onto here now I'm going to, let me just add, I think I did this the other time and it puts the warp tool in a weird place. I'm going to just delete this warp because it goes over the entire document when I reset it. But let me come back here. I'm selecting this object and oh, see our default go down to the bottom. Let me just add Let's just choose perspective this time. So we're going to kind of pull it up like that. Maybe just make it wide. Say that was it. Again, got that in perspective. If I go out there, I can go and choose that one. If you look closer, you'll see this, this object will change here. You see there, it's it's pulling through the different artboards into it, so I don't have to load the thing every time a new one. You can see different objects of it coming in. Okay, so yeah, so that's how it works. The key is go to Pixel Persona. You can do then pixel warping, and then once you've attached all your pixel warpings to the different elements, you can just shift right back. Um, as I mentioned, you can. You can combine the two if you want to. I can, onto this design, I can pull in, let me pull in something else, maybe the star. And to that, I can add the normal warp tool. Let me just do quad. So I can distort. Did I put it onto the right thing? Let me just see. Yep. Just my screen is taking long to refresh. Let's let go there. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's taking a bit ethically long to refresh. There we go. Come, 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 refresh. That is weird that it's taking so long. I think it's a screen recording plus a few other stuff that are happening. So, yeah, if I go there and I then bend and distort it this way. Let's see. Okay, there we go. It's kind of distorting. So I am on this artboard, I'm distorting a vector by doing it here. And these two have attached to them the pixel persona warp areas that I can just go in and then go manipulate also. I can do them all together. They are just taking a while to refresh because of my recording speed. Okay, so hopefully that gets you guys excited. Uh, if you only got Affinity Designer, you can warp pixels and you can warp vectors. Cool. So let's enjoy ourselves. Great stuff. Have a fantastic day. Be blessed. And shalom to everyone.